spying they did on the Trump campaign. I'm shocked to hear that they put a spy in the campaign. Spy inside the Trump campaign, back to the FBI. FBI spies, or maybe two spies. It looks as if there could have been a second spy. These spy revelations. Spies in this campaign. That there was a spy inside. To spy on the Republican candidate for president. If there's a spy, they got nothing from it. If they ran a spy ring, that is an absolute red line. Those are some of the things that the president, President Trump's allies have been saying recently. Are you sensing a theme? The president has said it's starting to look like the biggest political scandal in U.S. history. So now out of the meeting, the big confidential meeting on Capitol Hill. Now what? Spy? No spy? Why is no one talking? Let's get back to it. Caitlin, weeks of talking, weeks of lead up, demanding, demanding they have documents, demanding they have information, a briefing from justice officials, and then it happens. And it's either now crickets or they say nothing new here or nothing to see here. Mm -hmm. So can we now conclude that this whole thing's been overblown? Well, I think the president's going to keep up with it no matter what came out of that meeting because he's been trying, we know he's been trying to undermine this investigation from the start. This allows him, as you just played those clips, to get to the people that he wants to get to, to say, look, this whole investigation from the very beginning was tainted, right? That's the message. And you're actually seeing that start to take hold in public polling, not only among Republicans, but among some independents as well. And that is uh, very dangerous in terms of getting all the facts out there. The president has had lots of opportunities to, uh, you know, kind of step back from this, right? And let not. this all play out from itself. The IG investigation, I think, would be uh, very telling. We saw that in the case and, and of look, Andrew and, McCabe. And look, let's, but the wait interjection, see, let's wait to see uh, let's exactly. wait to see what comes out of it. That's what everyone has said. But Steve, Lindsey Graham, speaking out, a supporter of Trump's, not a supporter of Trump sometimes, but does speak the truth and does like to call BS, Lindsey Graham says it isn't Spygate. An informant is not a spy. Do you concede that this do you concede that this was just a way to undermine the investigation? No. Uh, to begin with, I don't think Donald Trump is responsible for undermining the investigation. You look at the upper echelon of the FBI, the McCabe's, the Comey's. I mean, I said from the beginning that that whole investigation was compromised. They're S all registered Republicans. Well, well, it, it doesn't matter. They're protecting. I worked. I worked in law enforcement for 38 years. I've never seen a, a an extended fishing expedition like this. And when you I look at who's fish. connected, you looked at who's connected to. The uh, Clinton campaign. Who's connected to the opposition of Donald oh, Trump? Oh, Comey but is my, connected to the Clinton campaign? My, I think no, the Clinton campaign would in, beg to differ about the, that. The investigators on Mueller's team. Then how come they that. didn't leak it during so, the campaign? Well, yeah. well, well, that, that would have been... They, if they really wanted... They took pains to hide it. Yeah, yeah if they really today. wanted to hurt Donald Trump, they would have perp-walked Papadopoulos. They would have announced on TV. Just right. If they were after the Russians, you know what you do? You go to the campaign, you tell them, look, we got an investigator, and you wire up the people who the Russians are looking at. They didn't do that. They were going after the they president. Were Catherine, not to be meeting but with Catherine, is it, when it all comes down to this, when they are so sure there's going to be a spy in the campaign and they don't want to leave it to the inspector general to look at, they just want to talk about it first, is it all come down to this, what Leslie Stahl said a while back. Listen to this. And at one point he started to attack the press. And it's just me and my boss and him. In a, he has a huge office. And he's attacking the press. And it, there were no cameras, there was nothing going on. And I said, you know, that is getting tired. Why are you doing this? You're doing it over and over and it's boring and it's, it's time to end that. You know, you've won the nomination. And uh, why do you keep hammering at this? And he said, you know why I do it? I do it to discredit you all and demean you all so when you write negative stories about me, no one will believe you. Apply it to the press or apply it to an investigation he doesn't want to see happen? I think any source of accountability, he's going to hammer at anything he can, anything to, to suggest that um, any source of accountability that might come up with something that is unflattering about him is not credible, whether or not those allegations are actually true. We don't, least, this is not a surprise. This, this comment that Leslie Stahl mentioned, people were like aghast. They were shocked. I think this was well, this is like an open secret. But that she said it and that, she, that he said it to her. We don't have time for it, but I'm going to fit it in. Important part. It is Friday. Who won the week? You get to tell me, and it can be on the news or off. Caitlin, who won the week? 
I think women candidates across the country won, won the week. In Georgia, uh, the first uh, black uh, American was uh, woman was chosen to be a nominee, so we'll see how that goes. Evan? I would say the Me Too movement, because Harvey Weinstein today being arrested and charged with rape, that's 25 years, plus you have the Morgan Freeman accusations okay. against him, and then what happened to Jessica Walter in the New York Times interview yeah. for Arrested Development, where her cast browbeat her to forgive Jeffrey Tambor, and then the reaction where people... Uh, the cast ended up apologizing. What do you think, Catherine? Who won the week? I would say ZTE, uh, the ah. Chinese telecom giant that has admitted to illegally violating our sanctions against North Korea and Iran, has been uh, penalized by the Trump administration, mind you, has been called a national security threat by our own intelligence agencies, and now uh, Trump apparently wants to alleviate their suffering and instead is saying that the car industry, which is dominated by our allies, is in fact a national security threat. It's all part threat. of trade negotiations, or not, depending on who you talk to, yes. Trump or his, everybody else in his administration. And Steve, who won the week? Kate, I believe our American veterans, because whether you're left, right, Democrat, Republican, or in between, we're all Americans, and we all love our veterans and honor those who served. And there was the big graduation ceremony that, yeah. at, at Annapolis that the president spoke at today. And as we leave, we are all going to be celebrating, as Steve is pointing to, Memorial Day weekend. Thank you all for being Thank here. You. At least we all can come together around one thing, is that it's great that it's the weekend. This is day 491 of President Trump's administration. It's also...